I don't think government's very good at delivering anything, the mail or any services. I don't think they're good at fighting wars. I don't think they're good at delivering welfare. And uh, so I, I, I don't agree with the system at all. And I, and I basically don't believe uh, there's a proper understanding of what rights are. Because this whole argument, Republican and Democrats assume people have a right to stuff. They have a right to care, and they have a right to a house and a right to a job. And as a constitutionalist and a believer in individual liberty, I don't approach it that way. You have a right to your life and your liberty. You have a right to work hard and keep what you earn. But once you say you have a right to something and government's going to give it to you, they never ask the next question. <laughs> Where does the government give it? They have to violate somebody else's right. Government uh, is, is supposed to be established in a, in a free society to protect rights, not to divvy up the loot and shift things around. So it, it, this, is dem this demonstrates a complete uh, different understanding of, uh, of what rights are and what the Constitution says. You are a living example of sort of an anti-establishment, sometimes contrarian, the libertarian streak you have in you, not always in agreement with your own Republican leadership in the House of Representatives. And yet, in this anti-establishment climate in the country, even you have some Tea Party of primary opponents perhaps running against you uh, back in Texas. Is that a good thing for the Republican Party and the conservative sure, movement? Sir, I think so. We've already had our primary, and I think people see right. opportunities. Right. Of course, I got 80 percent of the vote right. in my primary. So, but, but no, I think it's an expression, and people might make misjudgments politically, but I think that's very healthy, uh, that, uh, that there's another party, and the party is the party of the right. people. It's not truly a party. But what they're seeing, there's no difference between Republicans and Democrats. Democrats yeah, are elected yeah. for one thing, and they don't do it. Republicans are supposed to do the other, and they don't do it either, and the people get pretty upset. And yet someone else who has tried to tap this sentiment, as you have, and you noted, you have succeeded, even despite somebody running against you, uh, is Sarah Palin, the former vice presidential nominee. And she has gone to the Tea Party convention. She thinks it's a good thing, as you do, to have some energy in the democracy. But she also says that if the primary candidate, as in your case, loses, that they have to make a choice. And she puts it this way. Which party reflects how that smaller, smarter government steps to be taken? Which party will best fit you? And then because the Tea Party movement is not a party and we have a two-party system, they're going to have to pick a party and run on one, R or D. Is she right? Do we have a two-party system or should they look to do more? Well, she fits my answer to that question because I tell people, do what they want to do. If that's what she thinks, fine. People ask me that all the time. They, what should I do? What should I do? Should I be a Republican, an independent, a libertarian? I say, just do what you want to do. And that's sort of a, a libertarian answer. But unfortunately, the laws are so biased against competition. If you come to the conclusion that Republicans and Democrats aren't too much different from each other, then there are no choices. We don't have really good democracy in this country because if I want to run as a third party, you know, I wouldn't have been before. I wouldn't you have been did. in those in debates. In 1988, you were the Libertarian candidate yeah, for president. In, two, in 2008, I do. In, two, <laughs> in 2008, um, that was my first presidential campaign I covered. In 2008, you ran as a Republican in the primaries. What about next time? Will Ron Paul run for president again? And would you, in this climate, will you sense the disconnect with both parties? Would you say, you know what, let's try to do the third party thing. I'm going to run as a libertarian. I dread the thought, and I get to ask that question all the time because <laughs> it's a the... gruesome thing. <laughs> and, and yet I have a lot of people, you know, have, uh, and I, my big surprise has been that the momentum of what we were doing in the presidential campaign, I thought, you know, the next day it would be over and done with and nobody would ever ask me another question. But uh, you know, the campus rallies that we have now are bigger than ever, more enthusiastic. People are looking for answers. And I'm sort of in between this thing, not, uh, you know, a... But you say you dread the thought, but that wasn't a no. Um, no, it isn't, it isn't a no, because there's so many people who ask right. me and they get enthusiastic. It's more like, how, how do I do it without offending them? But, you know, I wouldn't right. look forward to it. I haven't said yes. It, that would be a tough decision well, to make under you, these conditions. Let me ask you in closing. You're 74 years old, I think. Is that right? Something like that. Something like that. I, <laughs> so I feel counting. younger. I stopped counting, too. You feel younger and you act younger. And, and yet you are one of these innovative people in this world. We're launching the show today in the online community. Right. You're one of the innovators in online politics. You have, and I want to show our viewers this, nearly 4,000 followers on Twitter. That's not enormous, but it's a good number. On Facebook, more than 183,000 friends on Facebook. And in the Internet fundraising community back in 2008, you were wildly successful, some $35 million, maybe a little bit more than that. In closing, let's talk a little bit about that. How has the world changed in your time in politics and how important 
And what do, what's the next generation of this online internet politics? Uh, it's all been positive, unbelievable. I'd like to take the credit that I was the organizer. No, it's the spontaneity of what we have, and that's the internet. And those individuals who like the message would just get together, like the fundraising we had. We had six or seven million dollars raised in one day and broke all records. That wasn't because we had central economic planning. It was, it was because people got enthusiastic. I, I say it's the message, and I, I just happen to be at the place of delivering that message. But people are looking for something, and they see that I talk about personal liberty, personal responsibility, free markets, sound money. People are very interested in the Fed. Uh, I don't, I'm shocked that there's so much interest. And I talk about a different foreign policy. And when you talk to especially the young people, it makes a lot of sense to them when you talk about personal liberty. And when you talk about, I'm not going to go up there, I'm not planning to give you a lot of stuff, they don't care because they know the government can't deliver. Right. The government's bankrupt. That's what is the problem on the Hill, is nobody admits the bankruptcy. That's why this whole debate on medical care, the people think it's so foolish. An endless war, an endless welfare, and we're going to raise the national debt this year, $2 trillion. The people understand that, but there's very, very few on the Hill that have the vaguest notion what that really means, and it means trouble for this country if we don't straighten up our act.